Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another RPG update. So in this update, I'm gonna be talking to you about the stat import system that I've been building for Rick and how I've done that. And you can follow along. This is all gonna be coming in the RPG part two and this should just be about a 10 minute video to show you what we're up to in the meantime. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the code. So, oh, well, let, let me show you first of all what I've built. So I have brought together this scriptable object called core stats. And core stats is basically all of the stats of all the different uh, classes of enemy and the player and the player at different levels. So let's have a look at the player stat, for example. So you can see he's got a health property. And if I expand out this health property, you can see that there is a different property for each level that the player might reach. So at level zero, basically at the beginning of the game, he will be at 200, at level one, he will be at 240 and so on and so forth. So this is the basic idea. And for enemies, it's slightly different. If I click out on enemies, then you see you can, you've got an array here. I can add other enemy types in here and they are given a name. So there's a soldier class and then there's the bunch of enemy stats which are similar to but not exactly the same as the player's stats because we might want to do things a little bit differently. You can see here that we've got a hit per second for the enemy. We don't have that for the player and the player has an experience to level up but this soldier doesn't because the enemies can't level up. So there's some differences between these stats but the really interesting thing isn't the stats but the fact that I've put in here an import from CSV button. So if I go ahead and click the import from CSV button, then I can import a stat sheet CSV like so. Where does the stat sheet CSV come from? Well, it actually comes from Rick's spreadsheet that you may or may not have seen yet him build in the first part. And here, what I've done is I've tweaked it a little bit because now the spreadsheet's got this other column here called the class, which was previously just delimited by the sections here. And what's going on, basically, is now we can look up any property by the class and the name of the property and the level, and we can find that value in there. And that's what the import from CSV is essentially doing. So let me just show you a little bit behind the scenes at how the code is working. I'll just give you a flavor of what's going on. It's quite a few classes involved in doing this, but some of them are very, very small. So the top level here is this stat set, which is, as I said, a scriptable object. The idea is that you won't have multiple stat sets. You will have just one stat set for your whole game. Or you might have multiple if you're experimenting with different types of stat combination, but you would not really have multiple stat sets. It's kind of meant to be a singleton. And the idea here is what you've just seen, that structure is represented via a bunch of serializable classes. So we've got a player stats and an enemy class array. So the enemy class array is really, really simple because all it is is a class name and the enemy stats. So that's what allows us to give a name to a soldier versus an archer, etc. That's what I mean by an enemy class. The player stats and the enemy stats, the one that's pointed to from the enemy class, are both inheriting from the core character stats. So these are the stats that both the enemy and the player have. They are things like health, damage per hit, and special damage. Uh, those kinds of things are shared. At the moment, this is a rough structure. This isn't exactly how it's gonna be in part two. We might shift some of these properties around. Some of them may not be in both, for example. Uh, so we can see that then the enemy stats override this with a hit per second. As I said, that's not on the character, uh, on the um, on the player stats. And then there's a player stats as well, which has a few other things like the experience, etc., that I mentioned. So that's how that works. That's how that structure is created. And then there's some helper methods for accessing this in code later on. For example, if you want to get the stats for a particular enemy, we've just got a little method that goes through the, the array and finds the array element that has that class pretty straightforwardly. Okay, so that is how we build the structure. Now, how do we actually use that structure? There is a, if I go into the game world and show you on my player, for example, he's the easiest one to find. I've got this player level script. Now the player level script has two things of note. One is it has a pointer to the stat set that it's going to pull its stats from. And secondly, it tells you what level this player is currently at. And what this does is it acts as a go-between for all the components that need to know what the stats are 
and the stat set. So the health system can query the player level for its health, or for its uh, maximum health, by saying, hey, give me the maximum health, and the player level will say, okay, I can go to the, store, score, blah, blah, I can go to the core stat set and ask for the health at level 5. So that's what it goes ahead and does. So let's have a look at how that works. Uh, it, both of these, the enemy and the player, derive from this character level because I want they've got different ways of getting the core stats from the stat set, so I wanted to abstract that out. So you can see the abstracting that out has happened in this abstracted method called getStats, and that works differently whether you're an enemy level or a player level script. But the core behavior is the same. So you can share things like, uh, this is a property getter for health. It's just basically a getter. If you haven't seen the syntax before, it's just a getter. And what it's doing is it's saying get stats, however that happens, whether it's an enemy or player way of getting stats, then get the health from it. We can get the health from it because we know health is a core stat. So all types, enemy and player, can get health in the same way. And then we want to get the health at this particular level, health being an array of floats, so we get it at that particular level. That's how that works, fairly straightforwardly. And you can see how the overrides work here, that the get stats for the enemy has to look at the, so the enemy has to have a string here, a string property called its class name. So if I go, for example, let's see, I want to find some archers somewhere. Maybe I can find some archers somewhere in the assets, characters, should be enemies archers i think archer level five was the one i put it on there's an enemy level script on here and you can see in addition to having the level and the stat set it's also got this class name property and that class name property is what's used to look up in the stat set the correct class for the stat um, so it gets the right stat set back basically that's fairly straightforward and the player is much more straightforward because all it has to do is get the player rather from the stat set rather than getting a player of a particular class because we don't have classes for the players in the same way that's how it works so the levels will just level up the same way for the player okay and if we had any properties that we wanted to get such as health that were specific to the player then we would do it in here and i'll show you why in just a second so let's have a look at the health system because how have we had to change the health system in light of the fact that all these properties have been brought together into one single stat set? And I'll talk a little bit to why that's a good idea or a bad idea sometimes. Okay, so the health system here gets the max health points. Previously, this was a property set on the health system itself, set in that component. Now, this is a property again, it's just a getter. And what it does, is it goes ahead and gets a character level component that is a sibling of this component, of this health component, and hopefully it gets something, otherwise we return default value. If not, then it gets the health from that component, which, you know, we've done this getter over here. Similarly, if you had a component that needed to get something like the experience to level up, then instead of getting the character level, it would get a player level, and it would request the experience to level up, because it knows that if there is a type of player level, then this thing is a player and it's got player level stats and so on and so forth. So that's the basic idea of how this gets used. Now I'll give you a short look into how I'm creating that CSV editor because it's quite interesting, bit in depth, but quite interesting, I'd say. Let's go ahead and have a look. It is the stat set editor. So you may have come across editors just a little bit before. You may never come across them at all. They are classes that allow you to create custom UI like this when we go to our stat set. Let me go back up to our characters. Look at our core stat set. This button is not default. The stuff down here is all default, but this button is not default on this editor. So what we've done is we've overridden this method, the on inspector GUI, which is responsible for saying, what should I draw here? And it goes ahead and draws a button. That's what this says. It says, draw a button. Oh, and by the way, if the button has been clicked this frame, this will return true. So we can go ahead and make actions happen off the back of this. It's quite a clever little GUI system in Unity. I, I think it's quite neat. And so we, off the back of that, we go ahead and open up the CSV file that was uh, 
oh no actually we go ahead and open up a file dialog that's what was going on here I click it the file dialog is opened when that file dialog returns something when it is closed it will return a path in here and then we import the path and oh by the way down here we also draw the default inspector stuff going on down here uh, so import is fairly straightforward. I created a whole class here called the CSV importer. I'm not going to dive into this. It's fairly straightforward. All it does is it goes through line by line and splits out a line based on the commas in it. It's quite straightforward, really. You could quite easily come up with something like this yourself, I'm sure. Now, if we go ahead and look further down, what it does is it first of all imports the player stats, then it imports the enemy stats. And importing the player stats, you see there's this quite complicated, looks like complicated bits of code, but actually it's really configuration. Because what we're doing here is we're saying import a property that is called in the CSV base health, that the class in the CSV is player. If we go and have a look at our RPG stats, you can see we've got base health and player here. And then it's saying put it into a property on the scriptable object called health. And if you go over to the scriptable object and we dig down, we'd have to dig down into the player stats and then into its parent class, the core character stats, you can see that is the name of the property that we're putting into. So if we go back to the stats editor, it's doing the same thing for all of the properties and enemies, it's just slightly more complicated because it has to iterate over the array and all the different enemy classes and then it will go through and do a very similar import property step except here the class that it's giving is the class from the stat set so if I look at the stat set I could add in a class of my choosing here by extending the array and giving the archer a different name I don't know like archer 2 or something and then if I had an archer 2 category down here in fact there's a knight here that I'm not importing. So I can show you a very good example of this. I'm going to add in the knight. What's its stats at the moment? Things like quite low. It's going to have higher health, I assume, at the moment. Its first level is 28, whereas the knight's health is 80. So we're going to see how this importing will work. We can go ahead and hit import, go to get the stats, or I'll have to, I oh know the stats were already there. Go ahead and import it and there you go you can see the knight has been populated because what's happening is it's going through that array and then it is looking it up in our csv file so that's basically what's going on with this stat editor and obviously there's a lot of incidental complexity around how you have to save and manipulate scriptable objects but we don't have to go into that in too much detail so i hope you have found that overview interesting i'd like you to go ahead and thumbs up on this YouTube video if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't like it, and go ahead and leave a comment for me and say what you thought of the contents of this video. Are you excited to put this into your own project? All of this again is coming up in part two, and I look forward to seeing you again in next week's weekly update. See you then.